In this video, we're going to discuss the uh, characteristics of balanced three-phase voltages and powers. That there's some interesting uh, characteristics associated with them that are just a result of the geometry of the generator or the relative phases of the three voltages. As we've observed, the voltage on each of the phases have the same magnitude. In other words, the amplitude of the A phase equals the amplitude of the B phase equals the amplitude of the C phase, or we can write it then as VAN equals VB little, let's see, BN equals VCN. And we can write there, we've noted here that the A phase has a zero phase, and that then becomes our phase reference. The B phase is lagging by 120 degrees, and the C phase is then leading the A phase by 120 degrees, or once again, it's lagging the B phase by 120, which means it is lagging the A phase by 240. So we've got the A phase here. As the A phase is, uh, is waning, the B phase is coming in. As the B phase wanes, the C phase comes in. Now the interesting characteristic of this is that the sum of these three things, V sub A N plus V, or no, V sub A, the actual phase, not just the amplitude, but take the phaser, V A, plus V B plus V C equals zero. To see that uh, graphically, let's look at the phasor domain of the, or the phasor representation of these three. There's V sub A with a zero phase angle. V sub B, same amplitude, just lagging by 120 degrees, minus 120, and then V C with a positive 120 degrees. Graphically, we can add those together by taking the V sub A phasor here, adding to that the V sub C phasor adding to that the V sub B phasor. So when you're adding phasors, it's just like adding vectors. You tip to tail them. As you can see, the sum of those three things equals zero. We're going to see that if the source is a balanced three-phase set and the each of the three phases of the circuit are balanced also, we're going to see that the corresponding currents in each of the three phases as well as different points and voltage at different points in the circuit will also be balanced three-phase sets. Another interesting characteristic of three-phase sources or a three-phase system is that the instantaneous total, in, let me put it this way, let me say it again, the total instantaneous power delivered to the load is a constant value. Let's see if we can understand that. Once again, here are the three voltages, 120 degrees out of phase with each other. Now, power is proportional to the voltage squared. We've seen that in a resistor, that the power in a resistor is equal to V squared over R. So squaring each of these takes the negative lobe and reflects it about the horizontal axis, about the time axis, and it's a totally positive value at that point. What was negative is flipped over and becomes positive. So what we have down here is the power of the A phase, the power of the B phase, and the power of the C phase, and you'll notice that all of them are above zero for the entire cycle. Now, because a three-phase load has three, has each of these sources going to it, the power in each of those phases is represented by one of these three um, power curves. And although each of them individually goes to zero, you'll notice that as, say, the C phase here is going has a zero power, the A phase has a non-zero and the B phase has a non-zero, and that when you add those three phases together, you get a constant equal to 1.5 times the, the uh, magnitude of the individual phases. And similarly, when the uh, power in the, uh, say here in the B phase, is a maximum, these two here are not maximums, they're, they're smaller, but they're still positive values, which when added together give you a constant, or give you that 1.5 times the amplitude voltage. So it turns out then 
that the power, the instantaneous power delivered to a three-phase load is a constant, even though the power in any one of the three phases is pulsating, is, pul is, is pulsating. <laughs> That's a real advantage to three phase. You don't, the power going to your load is not pulsating, it's constant. So you're not introducing a vibration associated with the electrical source. And it turns out there are a number of other advantages to three phase. Because you've got three different windings, say we're talking about a three phase motor, because you've got three different windings, each providing force or torque to your shaft, no one phase has to provide all of the power. So for a, a motor of a given power, a, a given horsepower, say a 15 horsepower motor, comparing a three phase 15 horsepower motor to a single phase 15 horsepower motor, no, the, the, each of the single phases of the three phase motor will have less current through them and be providing less of the, of the torque than what that single phase winding would need to be doing on a uh, on a single phase motor the currents are going to be less for a given voltage the currents will be less and so the winding wires need to be smaller you also end up with less I squared R loss in a three phase motor so they tend to be more efficient and run less so in general a three phase motor is going to be smaller in size and run more efficiently. Frequently a three-phase motor for the same horsepower, especially when you get into larger motors, you'll find that a three-phase motor is actually less expensive than a single-phase motor.